Hello everybody and as Anna mentioned today I will run you through the complete process of how to create a design uh, for Godric Press in, uh, in Shaper and then uh, as you can see you know, we do various 3D prints and I will show you all the different methods and possibilities. We will go a little bit also more into prototyping, making hinges and joints and all the stuff. I will go also a little bit more in detail with the different 3D printing methods and tools. And okay, perfect. So as you can see, I have here three files I created. And I blocked this one out as uh, the first one. I can just quickly open this, this one here, where I come up with the basic idea, started to block everything out then it's time to do some 3D printing. There are a lot of adjustments we have to do here. And then at the end, you know, we can, for example, manufacture it. Everything sounds very easy, but there are some pitfalls. So in this webinar today, pretty much I will try to run you through some of the techniques you could use, also the problems you might come across and how we could solve them. So let me get started first. So let me hide everything and there. I'm using an actual garlic press simply as a demo piece. So you can see how the whole thing was built and designed. This is something I do a lot with my students too in industrial design, taking something and taking it apart. And this way you really learn actually how to build something. I have here, as you can see, a very basic sketch that represents everything. Uh, I revolve for the upper handle, I revolve for the lower handle. Uh, for example, here, as you can see, the stamp. Here, the revolve for the basket. And here, a revolve for the insert. Okay, so all these sketches that I used to create my first basic CAD model. This really lines up exactly with the sketch. And here I have some of the openings because I wasn't necessarily sure do I do only openings like as you can see in this part in the basket or do I maybe want to have this area actually closed. So instead of having this basket or insert, I can just put the garlic in there and then press. Okay, so everything, if I open this folder, this is also another tip, give always names to everything so it makes sense, otherwise at one point you have 100, 200 bodies and you don't know who is what. So as you can see, just as a quick review, I gave everything logical names and certain objects, for example, all these cuts down here, I put into groups. Okay, good. So how do you go from there? So this is just a basic model and I would like to turn this into a more revised version. Let's say like here. So there I put everything together. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I we should have gone to this one. I jumped one step there. So in this model, you can see everything is joined together. If I open this folder, there you can see, uh, see, that's the reason why you shouldn't give names to everything. There's the handle, including the, the support or the hinge. I have here the lower part, everything the modeling tools got put together. There's the basket or insert. Okay, so that makes it pretty, pretty easy to understand. Essentially here I took the, the sketch turned into basic models and then I put things together and started thinking about also surface details like the joints. I started breaking the individual edges. There you can see that here we have fillets, 
very tiny. So this is kind of like a, the thinking process of how something could be put together. And I'm still in the process of, uh, let's say, digitally prototyping or exploring my design. Because like in the sketch we have done here, everything made sense, but there are some problems we I didn't really see there yet, which I needed to troubleshoot afterwards. Now, because while we do not have physical models, um, that does not necessarily mean we can't maybe explore the idea of joints. You see here that this whole thing is rotated. And if you have a mechanical piece, something like this, where we have one, two uh, joints and essentially two objects that rotate, this is extremely easy to prototype for two reasons. First, we can use the cut section view to quickly see now when I rotate this one up, where it is, the stamp. How is this one currently inside my model? Does it intersect anywhere? So at this point, as you can see, the stamp was moved up and angled, all is good. So how did I do this? You can go to transform and move. I select this handle, also select the stamp. And in this case here, obviously we want to also rotate this joint part. And there is my 3D widget. Now with the pencil, I can move the violet center point to the cylinder here. So I don't necessarily need to create an axis for rotation. I can simply use this um, cylindrical shape. And as you can see, the widget snaps right to the center point of that circle. So that's pretty awesome. So now I can continue rotating this one up. For demonstration purpose, let's rotate it to here. And then then I can see, so how many degrees can I rotate this one till it hits the, the lower handle? And if we maybe, yeah, let's move this one to there. So this is, is this a smaller one? Yeah, okay. Now I can do another cut section there. You can see this. can rotate to this view, go to transform. This way now I only want to rotate the stamp. So I realigned my 3D widget. Blue is my rotation axis. And now I simply rotate this one and try to pay attention to at what position is this one still perfectly centered. Yeah, so you can see it works pretty good. So in this process, I somewhat to a certain degree virtually verified that the way how I designed everything and I rotate it, it will actually work the same way like the real piece. But this is just virtually. Uh, it's very different when we start and actually making a physical part because there is another set of problems we will come across. So let's go to the next model. Here I have uh, the same basic starting point. Let me open my folders. I have the raw model. I have a 3D printed version. I have here a more extruder and I have a metal and resin um, model. For example, when we do this as resin or uh, metal, that's the reason why I disconnected the handles. They would be very heavy, particularly if this would be metal, but also with resin, I was really much more focused on, on this part because the rest, uh, let me hold this into the camera, I can just simulate simply by a different material. This is just a tube, so it would be very expensive to 3D print um, out of resin or metal. And I can just 
do it this way. Um, resin prints are time consuming and by removing a big piece I also cut down the print time so a little tip. Plus plastic and wood always looks good. Okay so let's go back to to this part. So what did I really explore here? I will hide all these parts here and this essentially was the first 3D print which I did. I can do a cut section here then there you can see all the individual parts. I also have as you can see in here a version for the lower handle with and without holes. For example also the same for the insert or basket because I tried here to explore where do I put these holes in and let me now show you the first print results so in this case I printed everything minus the, the holes so no holes no holes uh, okay so this is what I printed there's the insert and the lower basket no holes printing time is very important and obviously also the resolution so when you do a 3d print the question is and do you always need to do the highest high res print maybe a very coarse printing method this is done with a task 6 moisture can be very sufficient as you can see, the quality is uh, very questionable. There are some interesting printing issues. As you can see, the hinges didn't really make it. Um, or the support parts also here. Looks like somebody was hungry, ate a little bit of material away. But it's fine because these prints go very fast. In, uh, in another section of this webinar today, I will also go more into detail into how to 3D print and set everything up. But because this is very fast, I can make quick and coarse prototypes and hold them, for example, like digitally the thickness of these handles. I can't really verify because I can zoom in and now they're fill the size of my iPad. I can just really zoom out it's a tiny piece now this is very difficult to establish scale which is why for the first print I always would do don't uh, um, be bogged down by quality just do it fast so you can verify look and feel and comfort etc now again and as I said this was printed with the more extruder very fast if I try to hold this more to the camera you can really see how how jaggy there the quality is and here even the holes are <laughs> they are there uh, but not really and this is fine that that type of nozzle is not made for this fine detail but printing bigger parts another really interesting element is also here the stamp so this the stamp was printed pretty good besides again uh, this part so that is then when maybe you might want to say, okay, I will do another print, but maybe with a, a little bit finer resolution. So this is actually done with the same printing hat, again, TAS 6 more extruder. But if we compare this here, you can see the lines are much finer on my left hand than the right hand. Also, the print time was obviously higher. But now all the details started to look a little bit better. The holes transferred much better. 